Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a let's play. It's taken me a week to actually remember that I was doing to Europe Universals for Third Odyssey, the heirs of Ericsson, which I'm pretty sure everyone fig can figure out from the fucking tile. We're going to be playing Helluland or Markland. Well, we're going to be playing Helluland because I've already played Markland. So we're going to be playing as Helluland, which is essentially the just a little bit worse. I, I, I mean, they're pretty much dead even. The only difference is we don't have, like, these guys are a little bit more split up. They have, like, a little bit more land down there, whereas we're just here. So, let's get straight into it. I will be reading all events again, because I don't know what new events they might have added since the last time I played this. But, yeah, I hope you guys are ready for this series. I mean, I did want to get it done straight after the, uh, with, with it or on it. Um, but unfortunately, I just, I kind of forgot. I ended up getting busy at work, and then I, then I had a week off. And then, well, I'm still in my week off, but I kind of just, yeah. Anyway, Third Odyssey, the Vikings. Thank you for trying out Third Odyssey. You are now playing as one of the forgotten Norse colonies known as Helluland, founded by Leif Erikson uh, of the Thorfinn Karlsifin, a pair of legendary Viking explorers. Long since forgotten by the people of Europe, it is now the part, last heaven or haven of the Norse culture where Odin and Thor are still worshipped and the people still sacrifice in great blots. Your nation is suffering greatly from the effects of its isolation. A small population, a lack of organized trade and production facilities are difficult obstacles to overcome. And to make matters worse, a deep-rooted rivalry between the Norse, remaining Norse colonies is brewing to the point of war. Glory to Finland. Purge the fallen in our homeland. Sail to England and claim it for the tier. For tier. Travel to Roma and hang the Pope in a blot for Odin. Glorious, glories to Finland. Glories. There we go. So we've got the discovery ideas, which... Is obviously the first thing there. So let's have a look at our missions. So our missions are... We have... This is the only special mission. Everything else is pretty standard, which... That's fair. I mean, not a lot of people really play these guys. So, but first things first, actually. Let's get our uh, deity. So... We've got Odin, Freya, Thor, Tyr, Njord, Snorta... Or Snotra. Ulair and Hel. Um, so, what do we want right now? Do any of these give me... Like, so none of these are going to be useful to for uh, colonies. That's unfortunate. Freya is one of my favorite, along because it gives national manpower modifier and national tax modifier. And you know what? We're going to go for that straight away. Any extra money in the beginning is going to be good, because we're going to be like losing a little bit of money. Uh, so let's take our mission fulfilled. So we've fulfilled the mission to build to a force limit. Any growing country must maintain a reasonably sized army. By expanding our force, we can build both further our political interest abroad and stimulate our domestic in economy. That's all we can do so far, missions-wise. Uh, so we can introduce the vision quest. Uh, Hillen gets rights of passage until the end of the game. Let's do it. Uh, introduce practices of initiation rights for adolescents to find spiritual direction, uh, direction and make passage from childhood to adulthood. And spreading of Norse rituals. Converting the natives to the Norse religion... Converting to the Norse religion requires nothing. Every person is able to direct their own... Be able to direct their own religious and rituals. As long as you honour the... The Aziz, Odin, Thor, Freya, and Snotra. The Snotra. You are considered a follower of the Astura. Let us encourage more and more of our subjects to learn of our gods. So that's... Uh, so what is this? Yeah, spreading of rituals. Yeah, I like that. So that's that done. Um... So let's uh, let's get the first uh, month going. We're going to be playing on uh, four speed because, um, well, why not? So look, we get an alliance off from Markland. It's the best thing to just to immediately accept it. Let's get our ships trading. Um, we've got nine ships to trade, and we want to protect the Ericsson Gulf because that's where both myself and uh, my ally uh, in over here are going to be trading. So apparently, we're some of the weakest powers here, and of course, we're going to go marry into our allies. Uh, because uh, technically, I believe I don't know if they've changed it so the, an event will fire uh, to kill uh, to what make you want to kill each other. Authority called into question in the most recent tithe or thing. I think it's tie. I can't actually remember to say that. Various free men have started to question the Yarl authorities, uh, pondering that maybe the thing. Pretty sure it's not said thing, but anyway, that I'm just gonna say it's thing until I remember how to say it. Should be uh, should hold more power than the Yarl himself. Bah, the Yarl has the last word. So, for now, we just need to really try and smash down this idea set to get ourselves a colonist. Because without a colonist, we can't really do anything. And with a colonist, we can obviously do something. So I'm actually going to be completely ignoring tech until we smash up to brave the elements. Because 
We're already behind because we haven't even embraced feudalism. Which I'm pretty sure is something new to the uh, mod. I don't think you had to embrace feudalism originally. But for to grow, we well, we need to grow to make money. Essentially. I'm not, I'm not going to pay for my army right now because that's losing us some money. And we don't need to worry about Markland. Um... I'm also going to mothball these ships just to increase myself, get myself a little bit more money. Now, this amount of money isn't going to be enough when we start colonizing, which means we need to make sure we have spare money. Uh, because, obviously, that's fucking just bad for us. So, if we can finish this idea, we get two colonists. Um, so, colonize Greenland is the first mission. If we get that first, it doesn't really give us any colonists, or it doesn't really give us anything other than a little bit of prestige. Maritime culture and trade develops in uh, Fjertsland. Ships are being produced by the dozen in the ports of Fjertsland. People in the region are being raised to be sailors or merchants instead of farmers and artisans. One can almost smell the mercantilism and exchange of currency in Fjertsland. Oh, Fjertsland? I don't actually have to say that. That's there. Good for us. So. So essentially the first goal is to get this. And for some reason we're not, we don't have a merchant here. Collect from trade. Uh, Torfin Bay. Some explorers have found their, have made their way north in search of, uh, in search of more sailing or sealing and whaling grounds, and they were able to find the Great Bay where several scralings live. From what we gather, this air, the area is extremely rich in both sea, sea, uh, seal colonies and high quality timber, and we should discuss the possibility of starting a small community in this in this bay that we deem to call Torfin Bay, in honor of the great founder Torfin uh, Kalsefni. Not exactly the best of name pronunciation, so hopefully I don't butcher too much stuff. Now, the difference is that I'm, I'm experiencing as I, the last time I played was as Markland. Uh, the difference is I'm already feeling is that um, I feel like they've got a better start because they they just ease they can like colonize by a land, whereas we if we wanted to colonize and block them we'd have to do it like by sea. So it's a little bit you'd have to like obviously have your navies. Whereas they don't, they also do need a navy already. So I mean, there's bonuses and there's advantages and disadvantages, obviously. Uh, Ericsson River. A group of young explorers have decided to follow Leif Ericsson footsteps and continue excursions through the long river to the south. Upon reaching the end of the river, they discovered a great lake, whereupon a number, a number of aggressive scaling tribes attacked their expedition, forcing them to return home. In honor of Leif Ericsson, we have decided to call this river Ericsson River. A great discovery, which is this little river over here. I believe it is anyway, that's blooming enough. Yep. Ericsson River. So we've discovered down there, which is nice. Uh, the only rival we could have is our uh, the exact opposite. Oh, the only put uh, obviously is Markland. So we need to uh, eventually get that. Uh, I don't know when we change. Oh, yeah, actually, let's look at our government. The cur currently, we are them. Uh, it looks like there is nothing special about our government other than that it's a Yaldum. I do think a little bit more work needs to be done on the Vikings, but I feel like it's not, I don't know if it's their focus, I haven't really kept up with how the mod's going right now. Great Lakes. A party of explorers this time, sorry, this time it's called by Warriors, has finally been able to fully explore the lake at the end of the Ericsson River, and what they found was extraordinary. At the end of the river, there are several Great Lakes, each bigger and richer than the last. But even more amazing was the discovery of a great waterfall. Many of the explorers have said to cry when they saw the an awing inspiring rainbow emanating from the waterfall. They claim that it must be the uh, fabled Bitfoss, the bridge to Asgard. Unbelievable. And yeah, each river actually is technically bigger than the last, I think, apart from like this one to that one. I think that actually is the same river, isn't it? Uh, which means that one would not be big. Oh, fucking no. So, our money's coming in slowly. Uh, the colony is going to be expensive, but it's, it's fine. We can... Uh, I mean, we've got quite a while to get there. I'm actually going to put a uh, focus down on military on uh, admin as well. Uh, Southern coast. Several explorers sailed south to explore the continent's coast and discovered a fertile and wealthy land. A great discovery. And Alicia has landed, which is good. Um, so I think our first colonies are just going to be to get further into our America. I mean, Greenland's the first on our uh, mission list, but I'd rather get down here first. So we're currently getting eight admin officers. I thought I don't know why I was gonna go for twelve. We'll be getting ten with our air, so that's great. Um, so as like I said, we need to, need to smash through this idea set. 
Currently, we have the exact same guys here. Uh, so let's seek support there. Let's uh, grant Monopoly charge and let's call a diet. Basically, just give them a little bit of happiness. See if we can, like, you know, maximize our uh, like any bonuses they give us. Advancement of the ability. It's just a baseline event. I'm sorry, just a standard event. I'm not going to worry about that. Now, why has my merchant come back? I didn't select the guy to trade there. That's probably why. Uh, trade wise, we're still quite low down. I'm not happy with that. Uh, if we look at the actual Herricks, Erickson Golf, uh, yeah, Erickson Golf. We're, we're, yeah, we just need, we need, you know, we just need to get some more cold on it. That's all we need. It's a little bit more hold of it on it, and we'll be fine. Er Elysian Bay, sorry. Rumors have spread in the recent months among both Norsemen and the surrounding Skraelings of potential newcomers to these lands. Though we know little about them, we have received artifacts uh, from the locals along our trade route that are unlike anything we or the, we or the Skraelings are able to create, such as ivory carvings of, and coins bearing Greek markings. In the Vinland Saga, the Greeks were said to have financed the Leaf's exploration party by buying several narwhal horns from him. Regardless, we must investigate these claims further and hopefully expand our trade network, for we remember the Greeks being a great target for raiding and trading alike. Let's meet these Greeks. They've already expanded to four provinces. Quite worried. Quite worried indeed. Elysia. The delegates have arrived, finally arrived from the Greek in, at the Greek capital, which they call New Constantinople, or Miklan, Miklagard, in our tongue. It is truly amazing, it is a truly amazing city, filled with countless people and magnificent buildings. So amazed were some in the party that they wondered if they had not died and gone to Valhalla. From what we understand, these Greeks were forcibly exiled from their homelands by savage foreigners, and were only saved by the quick thinking of their emperor, who led a great fleet across the ocean, just like the ancient Norse explorers. The worship of the White Christ of the theirs brings the great concern to our diplomats. According to the old tales, many of our ancestors have come to the honeyed words of their priest, foregoing their heritage for this new god. So they are officially a. Uh, they did. They did. They took. Uh, they kept or orthodox. They didn't. Uh, didn't embrace um. Uh, Hel uh, Hellenic faith. That's fine. When the diplomatic party finally reached the glittering imperial palace, they were received by a fabled emperor himself. Even with a language barrier between the two cultures, some basic information was exchanged, and thus it was agreed that a group of Greek diplomats and explorers would accompany the Norse party to visit and even possibly strike a deal with our people. Prepare the call. We have visitors. Visitors from the south. The diplomats from the Greeks have finally arrived, and we, together with the Jarl and the, of the remaining colony, uh, have prepared the best possible reception for our guest. Hopefully things will go well. Uh, at least has agreed to our trade deal. This will hopefully reinvigorate our trade and help to re-establish our merchant class. So they actually allied. The, so I'm guessing because I'm playing as this country, they decided to uh, they decided to strike a deal with us instead of our enemy. Naval research wrong. No, that's that's fine. Just just lose the prestige for now. Oh shit! It's Diplo. Oh for fuck's sake! I didn't realize that. I, I should have noticed that was a Diplo. Well, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you make exp you make you make uh, mistakes. The great discovery, oh, sorry, Vinlandic Exodus. The discovery of Elysia has been a great boon for us to us. For their mere existence, we was able to re uh, re uh, the revitalize our previously non-existent merchant sector in a matter of months. This has led to more and more Norse folk seeking to expand, establishing new businesses throughout the fertile, em empty land surrounding to us, surrounding us, and it falls upon us to help their struggle, both for the good of the people and the yarp of the Jarl. So, oh shit, we gain a we gain a colonist. Sweet. And we need a native policy, and we they've beaten us to a colony. We'll uh, we'll do. I'm just gonna do native uh, coexistence. My colonies may be slower, but it looks like they've done native coexistence or one of the the other the middle one. Oh, for fuck's sake! I keep forgetting that. So you have to press send and send colony. So they're actually gonna be a couple months ahead of me now. The pain. It upsets me. I'm not gonna lie. And they've increased their stability as well. You know what? I'm gonna increase mine since I don't actually have. Uh, since I've for some reason got that instead. Encourage divination. Yeah. Religious sacrifices. Turn religious sacrifice of animals and bloodline into common practice outside the priest of God. Yeah. Make people happy. Build the Farman district. I'm up for that. 
Right, so our first colony is a little bit behind this asshole, but we are getting 20 people a year because we've got the Elysian trade deal. So we are growing slightly quicker than them. Um, and when we get here, we also remove settler penalty, so... I'm kind of a little bit pissed off that I'm, I uh, fucked over myself a little bit. Um, and I can't get any diplo from these guys. Hey, native assimilation. assimilation. Okay, so we're currently ahead of these guys now. Good. I want to get down to here. Uh, actually, no, I want to be there, but I can't get there just yet. Uh, of course, give them more autonomy. I, I always go give them autonomy because obviously you get more, you get two more pips, which is always, sorry, two more development. Apparently, these guys are a little bit stronger than me. Well, good for them. I'm not worried. Because like I said, Jesus Christ. Wait, it costs two gold to mate. I didn't realize it cost two gold. Pretty sure it was one. No, no, it is two gold. What the fuck was I on? My apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what the hell I was on, but I thought for some reason it wasn't meant to be two, but no, it is two. Which means we're going to get into a little bit of div uh, issues for that, but we'll, we'll get there. It's fine. Our infantry are also, and our infantry and cavalry are also shite. Uh, we, we do suck from uh, bad men in the beginning, but we'll get there. It's fine. I'm going to ask for contribution just so I have a little bit more money in the bank. Because this is going to take quite a fucking while to get to a big colony. The Renaissance, this changes nothing because we're miles away and the Renaissance is going to take fucking forever to get to us. And we're only just getting feudalism because of the we met the Elysians. But hey, we're Norse, and that, that makes everything better. Uh, Kalpermen contracts. Our local Kalpermen have established contracts with several free men in the other Norse colony. They are now requesting permission to establish a small temporary trade venture with other with them to enrich our nation. Trade is always welcome. Right, are we actually making any money? We're making point two here. Whereas Markland is making shit tons of money here. Even Alicia makes more money than me. Why is that? What the? Lack of farming. Why do I have a lack of farming? Wait a minute. Is it because I don't have this? Yes, it is. So, we need to have a, have a ruler of Diplo, Diplo 4. So, we can't... I'm not going to get that. Uh, the year must be six, 1465. Or our capital. Oh, sorry. We could have a trader. Well, I ain't paying that for a trader. So I can get fucked. Mostly because I won't be able to pay him monthly anyway. So it'd be, you know, just be a downhill uh, uh, like investment that. Or, so I guess we'll wait until 65 then. Markland have a very good Diplo leader. So as you can expect, they're also in their discovery idea already. Which upsets me, but, you know, we can be behind. It's not a problem. They're now getting 35 people a year because they've got large food stockpiles. Don't know how the fuck you get that. We will beat Markland. It's not a problem. Well, I hope we'll beat him. Anyway, so let's get strangers in a strange land. While this land of ours has been our home for the last few generations, the natives here still see us as foreign invaders and the territory past our walls is still unbeknownst to us. To remedy this, we must venture forth into these lands like our forefathers did before us. So that gives us a lot of other idea groups, uh, allows recruitment of explorers and conquistadors, but it also leaders without upkeep plus one. So we can now have two leaders without upkeep, which that's pretty fucking good in my opinion. I'd love to attack the Inu, but they have allies and I'm pretty sure our men are as shit as theirs. So, you know, it's probably best not to... I don't know how much better that... Yeah, they're, they're probably doing way better than us, actually. When can we... Uh, is it 54? I think we can redo the... Uh... Nope, 72. It's 25 years. Holy shit, I did, me I did myself bad. It's okay, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. I can remedy this mistake. It's not a big issue. So they're up to 135. We're up to 298. Yeah, so we're already winning on the first colony. Yes, they've suddenly got... Oh, no, look at that. They're not like... The... 
See, they're going up and down, so it's all good. So I am a little bit upset that my, uh, what's it called, ally is, uh, I can't afford that, so I'm not paying for that. I would rather not go into debt, thank you. Even, though, even with all this stability, it's costing me an arm and a leg to get uh, this. I would just, I would, and they're even paying for their army, what the hell? How have you got so much money, my friends? Um, Maritime culture, nice one. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, I'm going to have to end this part here. Hope you guys have enjoyed the first part in this series. I hope you guys will follow the series. And if you guys would like to see anything else, just let me know in the description down below. I'll, let you, I'll obviously give some back and forth whether or not I like the idea, whether or not I'm interested. But it always helps to recommend. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next part. See you guys then.